I much preferred playing the White Sox than the Red Sox. What is up? What is going on, everybody? Welcome back and welcome into Seattle Mariners postgame recap plus trade recap as well. Uh, Mariners lose 14 to 7 to Boston. They fall to 56 and 52 on the season. Houston Pittsburgh still playing right now, so I'll try to keep you posted on that score. Before I go any further into the talk about the Justin Turner trade and this game, do me a favor, smash the like button. It helps out tremendously. Subscribe. I'm closing in on 4,000 subs. Cannot thank you all enough for all the support. Also think about becoming a channel member. Tomorrow morning, my first video of my um, top 10 baseball movies will drop. That'll be for members only. So check that out or think about becoming a channel member. We also do some cool contests. And don't forget to comment your thoughts on this game and the Justin Turner trade as well. Let's start there because this game was kind of a dud. Mariners acquired Justin Turner from the Blue Jays, primarily first baseman DH, been around the league for a long time, could play a little third base in a pinch. I'd prefer him not to be over there, but you know, if you need it in certain scenarios, he, he can play there. Um, Justin Turner is actually a guy I've talked about quite a bit on Twitter last night. I Even if you follow me on there, I made a tweet that I'd still think Justin Turner would be an interesting acquisition for the Seattle Mayors to make rattled up some of his numbers, um, good veteran presence, has won a World Series, has been to the playoffs, thought it made a lot of sense. I actually thought it was a decent bat to look at in the offseason when the Mariners were looking at DHs. He kind of had Mitch Garver bringing back Tay Oscar. You had Jorge Soler, Turner. I forgot who the other one was. I'm blanking. Um, there was another name in there that we talked about a few times that I'm just blanking on it. But always like Justin Turner, kind of the guy that will give you a professional at bat. Um, and I think it's a good acquisition for the Mariners. Now, let me be clear. I don't think Justin Turner moves the needle to the point where I'm going, oh, psh, Houston, you better be on alert. We got Justin Turner coming. You know, this is the AOS now runs through Seattle. But what Justin Turner does give you, an improvement in what you've gotten at first base. Ty France had a rough year. Um, off to Cincinnati now, wishing Ty the best. Maybe in a hitter's park there, he can rejuvenate his career a little bit. Tyler Locklear, good prospect. I like Locklear, and I think he should be in the fold for 2025, but clearly it's just not working right now with him. Uh, the at-bats aren't good. The contact isn't there. If the Mayors were 20 games out of this, then yeah, you give Locklear whatever at-bats you have the last 50 games and go with it, but you're trying to compete here. You had a veteran bat that's got a 349 on base percentage on the year, 109 WRC+. plus. Again, not numbers. The slugging's not super high. I think it's, let me see if I can pull it up here. Uh, Turner is slugging, if I can get it to load here, uh, 3 370 on the season. So there's some flaws, and we'll talk about that with Justin Turner. He's not a perfect player, but he's an upgrade over what you currently have. And listen, I'm with everybody. I, I would love Vladimir Guerrero Jr. to come here. I just don't think the Blue Jays are moving off of him. And sometimes it, got, it, it takes two to tango. Now, I've said it before, the hardest moves to break down are the ones that don't happen. I have no idea. It sounds like the Mariners tried for Vlad Jr. I have no idea what that means. I have no idea what the offer was. And unless Divish or somebody comes out with a video or an article about what they actually offered, it's really hard to judge it. Maybe the Mariners did fail. Maybe tomorrow Vlad Jr. is traded and we go, uh, yeah, I would have done that. That's the more impact bat. And it certainly is a more impact bat than Justin Turner. But it's also very possible that you've got a Blue Jays front office that fighting for their jobs and they want to try and run it back a little bit next year. Turner's a free agent after this year. So for them, Turner's nothing. But they, they may want to keep some cornerstone pieces. They may view Vlad as that. They may think maybe they can get a contract extension done. So it's very possible that Vlad just wasn't on the market as much as we thought. Again, if it comes out that the Mariners tried to get cheap and offer a lazy deal for him, then yeah, I'll be critical of it. But you guys know where I stand on this team, right? I, I made it clear now. They've got to get in the postseason. If they don't, whether that was acquiring Vlad or acquiring Turner or Rose Arena, whoever it is, they need to go. Like, I need results now. They've had years to make the process work, so I don't really care who it is that they bring in. If it can add a spark, great. If not, time to go. And even if it adds a spark and you don't get in, don't care. Um, and I know that's probably not the best way to view things, but that's just where I'm at. I do think Justin Turner can help. Um, I, I round off some of the numbers. Another thing about Turner does not strike out. So the strikeout issues, Turner's going to help with that. Puts the ball in play. Has grounded and do, uh, I think, 15 double plays here. It's one of the downsides when you're a slower player and you put the ball in play. But also works his walks as well. Um, doesn't have a lot of power, which actually, in maybe kind of a weird way, could play fine with T-Mobile because he's not reliant on power. 
Um, if he was someone with 25 home runs and that was his main skill, I might be a little bit worried as a right-handed hitter in T-Mobile, but because he's not a big power guy, it may not batter, ho- batter matter. Hopefully more of a gap to gap guy can hit some doubles for you, get on base and just provide a little spark. I will use kind of the Carlos Santana analogy. Now I don't think he's going to have the pop Santana had, but a veteran guy who's been to the postseason, who's been through the baseball wars and is still a productive player, right? A 350 OBP will play his 720 OPS. Probably the best I think would be outside of now a Rose arena. Actually, it's better than a Rose arenas this year would be one of the best for the every everyday position players for the Mariners outside of probably Cal Raleigh. His 109 WRC plus one of the better ones. Listen, I don't want to stand on a soapbox and tell you, oh, guys, you should love Justin Turner. We have seen plenty of hitters come in here. Turner's 39. Sometimes it is nice to have a player on the Mariners older than me. I will say that. I feel, I feel young again, rejuvenated. Um, but, you know, sometimes these don't work out. Mitch Garver's come here, has had some moments, but overall hasn't worked out. Um, you know, AJ Pollock, some of these veteran guys, sometimes they just come here and it, it doesn't work. So I, I can't stand here and tell you guys that I know for a fact that Justin Turner will hit in a Seattle Mariners uniform. I don't know, but I do think it's better than what they have at first base right now. I don't think Vlad Jr. is a possibility. Now, if Vlad's traded tomorrow to somebody and we see the return, I, you know, I might change my tune a little bit on this. I still don't hate the Justin Turner acquisition, but I might sit there and go, why didn't we match that for Vlad? Now, we don't know what the Blue Jays value either, so you got to take that into consideration. So we'll see. My thought is that Vlad's just not getting traded. It sounds like the White Sox are not moving Luis Robert. Me and Mariner Sir talked about this a little bit in our last video. I think some of these names are actually going to stay put. And what you can do is when you make trades in the offseason. Now, for the Blue Jays, a little different with Vlad because he only has one more year in his contract. So if you're trading Vlad in the offseason, makes it a little tougher because you're only getting one year of Vlad. Whereas if you trade him now, the team gets a year and a half. So that might... I, I feel like they probably should trade Vlad because of that, but you know, we don't know what their front office is doing. Um, I'm not saying bad or good. I'm saying we don't know what they're doing. Luis Robert is someone the White Sox can look at in the off season and go, listen, we've still got multiple years of club control. If we trade someone in the off season, more teams are involved. You get more teams that are thinking they can make a run. So I'm not saying the Rockies would be the team, but the Mar or the Marlins, but maybe they slide into the competition in the off season where they're not going to do that in the middle of the year. Yandy Diaz is another name. I know a lot of Mariner fans have mentioned that they want. There were some rumors, and I, I guys, I have no clue about any of this. I've just heard through the grapevine a little bit, not even the grapevine, just what I've seen in tweets. I'm not even sure who tweeted it out, but that Yandy Diaz's wife and a Rose Arena's wife don't get along or something. I, I don't touch any of that stuff, so I'll let you guys handle that in the comments, but that could be a reason that the Mariners didn't go after Diaz. Maybe it was either Diaz or Rose Arena one or the other, and maybe they felt La Rosarina and Turner is better than Diaz and, I don't know, Mike Yastrzemski or something. I still think the Mariners should make moves. I still hope tomorrow we see a couple moves. Um, I'd like a left-handed hitting outfielder. I think right now you've got a very right-handed hitty, hitty, gosh, hitting heavy lineup with a Rosarina, Julio when he gets back, Hanniger, um, you know, Dylan Moore, um, Justin Turner now, you know, you got Cal and Polanco from the left side, but I wouldn't mind one more bat from the left side. Maybe Lamont Wade Jr. from the Giants. I know that's been a name that's floated around a few times. I think that would be an interesting pickup. Um, I think Mike Yastrzemski from the Giants would also be an interesting name to maybe keep an eye on. Uh, you know, I, I don't think the big names, and maybe I'm missing someone. If I am, please shout it out in the comments. But if, if Vlad's not getting traded, Robert's not getting traded. I, I don't know what big names, you know, Yandy Diaz, you could put Turner at DH and get him. I don't know the whole thing with the wives and all that. I, again, I, I try to stay out of that. <laughs> That's, I, I don't get involved in off field stuff unless it's something that affects the on field stuff. Um, but I think most of the big names are kind of just not out there. You know, we'll see. I could be wrong on that. Again, this isn't me trying to make excuses for Jerry and Justin. If they don't make the right moves. I told you guys, I'm I'm at the breaking point. Either win or go. Um, now, we can debate John Stanton and how much impact he has and, and all that. I think that's fair. It might not all be Jerry Justin's fault, but, you know, that's a debate once the season's over. So, I, I do think Turner can help. I, I hope for more. I, I hope the team does more. I, I'd say if they end up with Garcia, Rosarina, and Turner, 
like a C plus B minus deadline. I, I don't know. I, I don't really know. It, it's hard to judge it when we, like I said, it's hard to judge moves that don't happen because we just, I can't sit here and be mad. They didn't get Vlad. If Vlad doesn't get traded, it's very possible. Blue Jays just, Blue Jays just said no, you know, and I know people go, well, throw all the process. They still might've said no. I, I you know, it, it is possible. You could have thrown Cole Emerson, Lazaro Montez at them. And they may have been, nah, we're good. We want to hold on to them. I, I don't know. It is very possible. So um, we'll kind of judge everything when it's over. I do like Justin Turner, though. I think he can help this team. Um, and I think a good veteran presence. Listen, this game was a joke. Uh, Mariners lose 14 to two, seven. Um, the, the um show was terrible. Uh, kind of screwed Logan Gilbert there in the bottom of the third. Uh, Willie Abreu was up with two outs and runner second and third. Logan had a 2-2 pitch that was perfect. It wasn't even borderline. It was a perfect painted pitch. It was called a ball, and then the floodgates opened. Listen, Logan's got to find a way to get out of that. You know, I was tweeting out, ump one, Mariners nothing. Ump two, Mariners nothing. Ump three, ump four, ump five, ump six, ump seven. And eventually you get to point, okay, like, Logan's kind of got to get out of this now. <laughs> like, I can't, you know, the ump was awful, and Logan should have been out of that inning. That's a terrible missed call. But missed calls do happen, and you still have to battle through it. Um, I'm not trying to make an excuse for the up, and I'm not trying to make an excuse for Logan either. Logan's got to be better in a big game. Uh, you know, I, listen, if, if the Mariners get swept here in Boston, you know, the, the good juju from the White Sox series might be gone, right? Like, I was willing to say, hey, I was impressed. I know it was the White Sox. I was impressed with how they played in that series, though. And let's see if it carries over. But if Boston comes out and sweeps them, then we might just look back and go, yeah, the White Sox are just terrible and you beat them. Congratulations. That doesn't make you anything. So, you know, the Mariners got a little goodwill from that series, but man, could they undo it really quickly. Very similar to the last road trip, right? Where they win the first two in San Diego and you're kind of going, okay. And then they win the first in LA and we're kind of saying, all right, a little good momentum building here. And LA wins the next three and all the momentum has gone. So got to find a way to, to get something in this series. Didn't expect you to go into Boston and sweep. That's a good team. But with Gilbert, Castillo, Kirby going, I, I do think you should be looking for a series win here. And listen, we're, we're not at the time to go, well, one out of three. Well, the, you got to win these series. We are in crunch time here. Um, I'm not trying to throw code red up there and season's necessarily over if you don't, but you got to win these. And Boston's in front of you in the standings. So if you don't win this series, you don't have the tiebreak over Boston with a wild card. You can still get it if you win the next two. So we'll see what happens. Should feel pretty good. James Paxson, old friend on the mound tomorrow for Boston. Numbers aren't terrible. The underlying stats aren't great. I'm hoping with Turner in the lineup, a Rosarina, Robles, the way he's swinging it, these righties can t get get to Paxton a little bit. Garver probably in there tomorrow. Hanniger hasn't hit lefties, so I don't really know what you do there. It's the weirdest thing that he's hit righties and not lefties, but I don't know, but you do have righty bats that should be able to maybe get to Paxton a little bit. Hopefully Castillo's dialed in and you can get a win and then get the series, um, you know, on Wednesday would be great. And let's see if there's any more, you know, additions tomorrow to boost this team up a little bit. I would certainly hope so. Um, it looks like they're going for it. And I do appreciate that they've tried to go all in, but they do have fallback options a little bit. And that's kind of what I'd call Turner. That's not a bad thing. You need those guys too, right? But you got to mix in, you know, some other deals as well. If you can't go get the superstar, which may not be out there, they need to kind of get multiple guys, I think, to help out. I mean, there does come a point where there's only so much you can acquire at the deadline. Um, the good news is, listen, if if there is a big bat to be had out there, the Mariners farm system still in great shape. Um, they've, they've had a nice deadline, I think, so far up to this point, and they haven't really given away much that I would be, that I'm too upset uh, about losing here, essentially. Uh, Shrek, the, the player they gave up, I'm not in the, I, I'm not a big prospect guy. I, I know the names. I know some of the profiles. So there's other YouTubers out there that know him better that can break these guys down, but he's not inside the Mariners top 30 from MLB.com. That's not the end all be all list, but you know, I, I don't think anybody, I'm going to lose too much sleep over the Mariners losing. Um, and, and turn as a free agent. Then you're not stuck with him in age 40 season or anything like that. It's just a move to try and help you um, stabilize first base. I think. Uh, a little bit here. So Lockley will obviously be the move. He'll go back down. I think Vossler still deserves some at-bats, um, especially being a left-handed bat. Like you talked about, I think you're lacking a little bit in, in that area. So, um, you know, I think he can help there. Uh, you know, in, in terms of the game itself, 
frustrating, right? I mean, it's it's a bad loss. It certainly puts you in tough position. You always like to win that first game because it just sets you up very well. You win one of the next two, you're in great shape. Didn't ex- certainly didn't expect to sweep Boston, so I'm not gonna lose any lose my you know what over one game here. But like I said, if they do get swept, and this is where I always talk about sometimes it'd be easier to do series recaps because if they come back win the next two, we're fine, right? This game, these games happen. They got a little goodwill from the White Sox series, but you know, you lose tomorrow and your goodwill is starting to, it's gone. You know what I mean? So <laughs> that little bit of goodwill they got back is not going to last very long here. Um, Bears do score seven runs tonight. Good to see. The offense has certainly been much better. Tough game to really praise the offense too much. Because, you know, you got down so big early that Boston's just throwing fastballs, trying to get out of innings. So I'm not going to make a huge, oh my gosh, the offense is back. But they have now scored, what, 29 runs in the last four games. They're playing in hitters' parks. But listen, we've seen this team struggle. So I will take it. You've got an improvement coming tomorrow at first base to hopefully help. Logan, a little disappointing. That's now two outings in a row where he's just let one inning get to him. Um, you know, that angels game, that weird inning that he had where he gave up the five runs. And then today really odd, right? I mean, he should have been out of the inning, but bad calls do happen. You've got to rebound. And then it was like seven straight hits. Just ridiculous. You've got to settle back in and get through that. Certainly not going to come on here and bash Logan. He's been fantastic, but do need him to be better, right? If you want to make this run, the strength of this team is pitching. Um, you're going to need those guys dialed in. So Logan does have to be certainly better than he's been. Uh, his last two starts. We'll see how Castillo and Kirby perform tomorrow. So that's my thoughts to sum it up. Um, I like Justin Turner. Nice move. Not necessarily going to call it like a needle mover. Like, I don't think this now puts some errors over the top of the Astros, but it's just, it's an improvement over what you had. It does make the first base position better. Um, and, and I do think Turner can hopefully have some of those kind of Carlos Santana type vibes. There's also a chance Turner comes here and is terrible. There's that stat where he's missed, like he's seen 45, middle middle fastballs or something he hasn't hit one or something like that so I, i'm not trying to say that turner's a lock to be great here that there is definitely i don't think there's downside in making the move i'm not going to look back and go that move stunk but again like i said if, you know we're, we're at results based time and and even if you think it's good process the guys need to produce so hopefully turner can i think he can we'll see and we'll see what this team does um at the deadline i'll be at work tomorrow so i won't be able to really make any videos when i get home um, you know, I'll try to do a deadline recap essentially for you guys. You know, if they lose, I might do that instead of a post game recap. Uh, if they win, I'll try to integrate it or maybe do separate. I, I don't like doing separate videos just because one, I don't think it's fair to you guys to have to go like, okay, I need to watch here for Jay's post game here for the trade deadline. And I don't think it really helps my channel. I'd rather just kind of put it all in one. So tomorrow might be a trade line re- deadline recap plus post game recap, like comment, subscribe. Think about becoming a channel member members. The video should be out tomorrow morning. Um, actually I might wait for Wednesday after the deadline and then, uh, upload the video starting with number 10 of my favorite baseball movies of all time. Be something nice to talk about. That's not Mariners. Take care, everybody. Have a great night. Enjoy it. And as always go Mariners. Peace.